Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror comedy film, Kunta Larnark Part 2. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with an old man initiating a ritual inside a dark basement. He opens an aged spell book and starts humming. On the mantle behind him is a framed photo of a woman. A massive tree is spilling through the cracks of the basement walls. Then a tall and lean figure emerges from the tree and steps into the room. It's a woman called Kuntalarnark, a mythic monster. She slowly approaches the old man, and he immediately calls her his queen. He explains that he has set her free, and now she must teach him dark magic. But Kuntalarnark kills him instead. She climbs upstairs and out into the world. It's a busy night in the town fair. All around, kids are playing, eating, or sampling the various attractions. However, a preteen girl named Didna is far from enjoying her time. She is worried about losing any one of her rambunctious four younger adoptive siblings. Through a walkie-talkie, she tries to reach her youngest sister, Ambar, but there's no response. Her other brother, Miko, who wears glasses, also doesn't know where Ambar is. Meanwhile, the two male siblings, Kresna and Panji, are playing with other kids. Their oldest teenage sister, Julia, is irritated by her boyfriend's lack of initiative in helping her take care of her siblings. Kresna and Panji almost get into a fight with the other boys regarding a stuffed bear. But Julia arrives and breaks up the fight. Dinder rushes to her gathered siblings and tells them that Ambar is missing. Luckily, they find Ambar dozing inside the Ferris wheel. She tells the others that a woman had taken her there. One of the siblings mentions that it might be a Kumtalarnark that led Ambar there. Dinda herself had previously faced the Kumtalarnark when she was in an orphanage. Julia's boyfriend scoffs at the little kids believing in monsters, but they insist that the Kumtalarnark is real. They get home and tell what happened to their adoptive mother, Mrs. Dona. She's a loving parent, but is deeply worried about them being careless. The next day, a regal long-haired woman named Carmilla knocks on the door and introduces herself to Mrs. Dona as the biological mother of Dinda. She recounts the day she left her inside a basket on the orphanage steps. However, she doesn't explain why she gave away her own baby. What the two don't know is that Dina is eavesdropping on their conversation. Carmilla hands Mrs. Dona a map to her cabin in the mountains. That night, Dinda approaches Mrs. Dona and asks her if what she heard was true. She confesses to the child that she is not completely sure whether Carmilla is telling the truth. Mrs. Dona won't let Dinda go with her yet until she has contacted the orphanage matron to confirm her story. But Dinda insists that she wants to meet Carmilla. The two disagree, and Dinda ends up walking out. When she goes to sleep later on, Dinda dreams of a beating heart and a massive tree. She abruptly wakes up and gathers her things. But Julia stops her just before she steps out of the door, begging her younger sister not to leave. She adds that if Dinda talks to Mrs. Dona again, Julia and the other siblings can accompany Dinda and make sure she is safe. Mrs. Doma is still apprehensive, but she comes to understand that Dinda needs to make this journey so she can understand herself. With their adoptive mother's approval, the kids all pile into a car and make their way to the mountains. Along for the ride is Julia's boyfriend. They are now deep within the forest, and Ambar complains of wanting to poop. This causes an argument between Panji and Kresna, and the boyfriend slams on the brakes as a white-haired girl crosses the road abruptly. Just as quick as she appeared, she is gone in the blink of an eye. Fortunately, they are just a few meters away from their destination. Carmilla emerges from a large cabin, wearing a flowing white dress. Julia leads the group and greets her. Carmilla singles out Dinda immediately, and the others leave the two alone, so they can have time to get to know each other. The mother and daughter enter the cabin, and Dinda is amazed by how luxurious the cabin is. Hanging on the wall is a beautiful oil painting of Carmilla. Outside, Julia wanders near a well, and sees two white-haired creatures cackling below it. Her boyfriend sneaks up on her moments later, and the creatures are gone. After some time, the rest of the group enter the house, and Carmilla leads them to their assigned rooms. The boys are all together in one room, while Julia and Ambar are rooming in another. Inside the boys' room, the boyfriend tries to entice the kids to join in his meditation, but only Miko actually stays. Kresna and Panji sneak out of the room and explore the house. They come across a room with a large white screen and a collection of shadow puppets. Kresna explains that the screen is used during shadow puppet shows. He demonstrates with a couple of the puppets and puts on an impromptu show. Meanwhile, Mrs. Dona visits the orphanage matron to verify Carmilla's story. The matron hands her a letter that was placed inside Dinda's basket when she was left there. The matron hands Mrs. Dona a clay pot and hair pin that looks like a tree branch that came with Dinda too. Back in the cabin, Dinda goes exploring too. She finds a workshop filled with pottery of various sizes. She grabs one from the shelf and inspects it. Carmilla comes inside and offers to teach her how to make clay pots too. Carmilla elegantly shows Dinda how to use the pottery wheel. They don't notice Ambar watching them from outside. The show continues, but something sinister happens. 
Pangy watches in horror, as a shadow of a tall woman with long black hair and sharp claws stalks toward Cressna and kills him. Pangy screams out, and rushes to the back of the white screen. But Cressna is okay, and is actually bewildered by Pangy's actions. Back in the boys' room, the boyfriend and Miko are still attempting to meditate. He shushes Miko for snoring and farting, but it's not Miko making that sound. Suddenly, he sees a white-haired girl in a pale white dress, shrieking at him. She leaps and then passes through the boyfriend's body before disappearing. He then starts muttering about how they're all in danger from the Kumtalarnark. Miko freaks out and screams for help. They all rush inside the room, and Carmilla helps the boyfriend come back to normal. She explains that she must have done something to offend the spirits residing in the forest. On the other side, Mrs. Dona starts reading the letter. It was penned by Carmilla to be read in the event that someone tries to claim her daughter. She shares that she and her husband had bought a beautiful secluded cabin up in the mountains, but they didn't know that the area was rumored to be a Kuntalarnark lair. One day, she saw the monster leering at her baby daughter inside the crib. She then knew that the curse had come to claim her daughter Dinda. They were descended from a clan cursed by the Kuntalarnark. To appease her, their family has continually sacrificed their firstborn children. Carmilla's husband insisted that it's their duty to sacrifice Dinda, but Carmilla wanted to find another way to escape the curse. The matron then adds that shortly after, Carmilla and her husband disappear from their cottage and were never seen again. In the cabin, Carmilla prepares a sumptuous feast for her guests. Before they eat, Carmilla proudly shows off the clay pot that Dinda had made that afternoon. However, Amor acts out by smashing the clay pot, then she runs away. Julie follows her and knocks on their bedroom door, but she is drawn to another door across the hallway. She opens it and sees a staircase leading down to a dark and musty basement, the same basement shown earlier in the film, where the old man summoned the demon, Kuntalarnark. She goes down the stairs and discovers several framed photos of Carmilla, her husband, and baby Dinda covered with dust. Julia goes deeper into the basement and finds a large hole in the wall leading outside. Suddenly, the old man's corpse lands on top of her. She falls screaming to the floor and sees that inside the hole are the two white-haired creatures, which she saw down the well earlier. Julia loses consciousness because of that. Miko excuses himself from the dinner table early. He is suspicious of Carmilla and the woods, and he wants to find some proof that she is not who she says she is. So he goes snooping around her bedroom and uncovers a wooden box filled with worms. Shortly after, Carmilla also goes inside the room once dinner is done. Miko hides in her closet and peeks through the slats, like a peeping tom with magnifying glasses. He watches as Carmilla levitates and pierces a lizard on the ceiling with one of her nails. Dinda comes to her bedroom, and Carmilla urges her to go to her bedroom so they can sleep for the night. Miko manages to escape, and he comes running to his siblings to tell them what he saw. But Cressna doesn't believe his smelly bullshit. However, Panji pipes up, telling the others about the apparition he saw while Cressna was playing with the shadow puppets. This conversation makes the boyfriend remember the words spoken to him by the white-haired creature. Finally, the group is convinced that there is no bullshit, and they are pretty in danger from Carmilla. Carmilla sings a lullaby to Dinda as she strokes her hair. Dinda gets another dream about a beating heart. Meanwhile, Miko's book on otherworldly creatures proves to be useful. When the boyfriend identifies the white-haired creatures as twin monsters who accompany demons like the Kuntalarnark, the boyfriend runs out of the room and finds Julia still unconscious in the basement. The younger siblings all run to the living room, but are greeted by the sight of Carmilla, looking at them menacingly. She starts shedding her human skin, her eyes turn red, her limbs grow longer, and her dark hair becomes more unruly. It turns out, she is not Dinda's biological mother, but the Kuntalarnark herself. She just pretended to be Carmilla, so she could lure Dinda to her and finish the curse. The kids are horrified, and they scatter in different directions to hide. Miko and the two siblings sneak into the hallway to try and get Dinda from the room, but the Kuntalarnark ambushes them. They run outside the house, and Miko gets separated from them. Meanwhile, Julia wakes up, and she and her boyfriend race to get out of the basement. But as they scamper up the stairs, the twin monsters come after them and try to drag them back down. Ambar hides her smelly ass in their van, but sees the Kuntalarnark behind her. She screams out loud. Miko finds himself in a swamp. He hides in the water as the Kuntalarnark floats above him. He thinks he is safe, but the Kuntalarnark appears behind him and screams his shitty name. Cressna and Panji get lost in the woods and emerge into a strange and hazy circus, where dozens of kids are walking around with dazed looks on their faces. Cressna tries to ask a girl for help, but when she turns, she has the terrifying white eyes of a monster. The children all crowd around the two brothers, and they squeeze their eyes shut in fear. When they open them again, they see that they are still in the woods. However, vines snake all around their legs. Julia and her boyfriend finally make it out of the basement. They head straight to Carmilla's bedroom and wake Dinda up. 
Julia tells her that Carmilla is really a Kuntalarnark. But the monster herself enters the bedroom, looking like Carmilla once again. She calls Dinda to her, and tells her that she loves her. Star for the love of a mother she never knew, Dinda steps forward. But the boyfriend gets in the Kuntalarnark's way. She gets angry and chokes his chick neck. He grabs an object from the desk behind him, and hits her right in the me face. For a moment, she shows her true face as a Kuntalarnark, and Dinda finally realizes that Julia was telling the truth. They both run, while the boyfriend faces the Kuntalarnark head-on. Dinda and Julia run outside, and look for the others. Mrs. Dona pulls up in her car, having made the journey after reading the letter. She explains to Dinda that to save her, her parents had banished the Kuntalarnark into her lair in the basement, with a spell that cost them their lives. However, their cursed family sent the old man to release and appease the Kuntalarnark. The Kuntalarnark is after Dinda, and considers Dina her own daughter she is entitled to, because of the curse. Mrs. Dona also gives Dinda the hairpin, that was in the basket her mother left her in. Its appearance makes her think of the tree inside the Kuntalarnark's lair. Dinda wants to confront the Kuntalarnark herself, but Mrs. Dona convinces her to hide instead. Meanwhile, the Kuntalarnark throws the boyfriend out the window. She steps outside, and Mrs. Dona douses her with gasoline in an attempt to burn her. But she is impervious to fire, and it just makes her angrier. Mrs. Dona urges Julia to find Dinda and protect her. The Kuntalarnark zeroes in on her and taunts her. Concurrently, Dinda scurries to the basement and enters the lair. Julia finds an axe and attacks the Kuntalarnark with it. The monster's head flies off, but its mouth is still moving and singing a lullaby. Her torso merely grabs her GPS head and attaches it back again. Dinda finds herself in a sprawling and magical woodland inside the lair. In the middle of it is a stream. She follows a stream and comes across the massive tree she keeps seeing in her dreams. To her shock, tangled in the roots are her brothers. The boyfriend gets possessed by the Kuntalarnark and grabs the knife. With erratic movements, he stalks closer to Julia and Mrs. Dona. The Kuntalarnark arrives, and Dinda wields her mother's hairpin against her. They fall to the stream below the tree, and Dinda stabs the monster with the hairpin multiple times. This weakens her, and Dinda crawls to the tree, only to see a beating heart inside it. She finally realizes what her dreams meant. She was shown the way to kill the Kuntalarnark by stabbing her beating heart inside the tree. The tree tries to defend itself by grabbing Dinda, using its tree hands. But she makes it to the heart, and stabs it with the hairpin. Because of that, the Kuntalarnark is swallowed up by the ground. Dinda's brothers all get free, and Julia's boyfriend is no longer possessed. The happy family reunite and rejoice that they are all now safe. As dawn breaks, they finally leave the forest and its horrors behind. The movie ends by showing a shot of one of the clay pots inside Caramilla's cottage. It now depicts an illustration of a woman with long hair. The lullaby that the Kundalarnark sang plays, indicating that she is not gone forever. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.